Then, O Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound to call on you when you are near and seek where you are found. For our daily prayer, we use the order of morning prayer found on page 235 in the Lutheran Service Book or page 024 in the middle section of Treasury of Daily Prayer. Let us pray. Today's New Testament reading is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. And when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them, and scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed, and ran up to him, and greeted him. And he asked them, What are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell to the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And it has often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. 
But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to him, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. And he did not want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and were afraid to ask him. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor David DePauli. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is coming back down from the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. They saw Moses and Elijah and heard the Father tell them to listen to Jesus. Now they rejoin the other disciples. But there's a crowd gathered watching the disciples arguing with the Bible know-it-alls. There's a man with a son who has been demon-possessed since childhood. He has seizures in which he foams at the mouth and goes rigid. He frequently falls into fire and water. The man had brought his boy to the other disciples, but they couldn't do anything. Jesus is not happy. O oh, faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? In other words, how long do I have to put up with this unbelief? And he orders the father to bring the boy to him. And immediately the demon throws him into a convulsion. And the man in desperation cries out, If you can do anything, have compassion and help us. And Jesus answers the man, If you can. The word if implies doubt. All things are possible for one who believes. Now Jesus is not angry with this dad, with his son, or even the disciples. He's angry at the devil and his demons and the chaos that they cause. He's angry at the unbelief that covers this whole scene. The clueless disciples, the uncertain father, the crowds just watching like it's a reality TV show. And we can relate to the feelings they have. These disciples failed, so let's take the kid to Jesus to see if he can do it. The team of pastors and youth leaders at this church didn't turn our kids around, so we'll have to look somewhere else. Isn't that the way it goes? If you don't get what you want, you shop around until you do. If Jesus and his crew can't take care of the problem, well, maybe we'd better look for someone else. Let's listen to Jesus. He says to the man, all things are possible for one who believes. Now that goes to the heart of all of this. And now we finally hear some honest faith talk. I believe. Help my unbelief. He's got it right. He is simultaneously believer and unbeliever. Saint and sinner. I believe. Help my unbelief. This is no self-justifying faith. This is the real deal. This is how faith sounds. I believe, Lord, and only you, the author of my faith, can deal with my unbelief. And Jesus heals the boy. Faith is not a thing in itself that we can show off or an action that we can do. Faith is nothing but a receiving. Faith is the empty ear that receives the word of Jesus' forgiveness. The empty mouth that receives his body the empty hands that receive the cup of his blood. Faith is always a gift given by the Holy Spirit. Remember how Luther says it in the small catechism, in his explanation to the third article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord, 
or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. That's the daily prayer of a baptized believer. But sinner saints like us still have that unbelieving heart of the old Adam in us. We're a strange mixture of faith and unbelief, all wrapped in one. Every day is a day for turning from unbelief to faith. Every day a baptismal dying and rising in Christ. All things are possible for one who believes. Because believing means trusting in Jesus and not in yourself. Absolutely nothing is impossible with Jesus. Nothing in heaven, nothing on earth. Nothing is impossible because it's not about you. It's about Jesus for you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, our support and defense in every need, continue to preserve your church in safety. Govern her by your goodness and bless her with your peace. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for joining us for morning prayer. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you.